uh, how to use them or how helpful they are because I've never used them. Telephone message note, if you call a patient and you um, <clears throat> have a discussion with them over the phone, you can bring this up and it'll set you up to type in whatever it was that you talked about if you want to record it in their chart. Uh, 401 message I've never used. Send a message I've never used. Um, sticky note is uh, really helpful. They get used a lot. When you click on it, it brings up a sticky note uh, window and you can scribble what you want with your mouse. If you want to type something that is actually you know, more than just a letter or two that's meaningful, then you'll want to click on edit up here and click on text editor. And then it brings something that you can actually type in like uh, you know, needs follow up CT and uh, CT chest in October 08 to reevaluate pulmonary nodule. And that way, every time the patient's chart ever gets pulled up, that's the first thing that pops up. I'm going to delete the one that I created with a just scribble. You sometimes you can use those in peds to just mark that patient as you're seeing them as somebody else, but usually you're going to use the text editor. And so you can see now that I just opened a chart and that popped up. Now I can click save if I want it to pop up the next time somebody opens a chart, or I can click delete and it'll go away forever. Um, the sticky notes are actually not a legal part of the chart, so keep that in mind. Um, if something ever comes up, you know, you want to type something that you don't want to go into the actual legal document of their chart, you can type it in a sticky note. That's what I've been told anyways. Um, so sticky notes are pretty useful. Uh, print forms, letters, free form. Uh, you can do an excuse this way, medical excuse, but if you do it this way, it's going to ask you to enter in a bunch of crap that the computer should already know, like uh, which physician is giving it and what today's date is. If you leave any of this stuff blank, it just doesn't show up. But if I'm going to do a simple excuse, I don't do it this way. Um, if you need to do an excuse for a caregiver, it's it's nice to do it this way. You just put in your name, the like the patient's mom's name or whoever it is. Like if she brought her kid in, she needs an excuse to work for work to say that she brought her kid in. This is where you'd go to do that. And then there's other things in there. If you want to write a letter to a consultant regarding the patient or a letter to the patient, um, there's a lot of different letters that you can get. You know, templates that you can get to from in here. So it can be pretty helpful. Uh, vaccination record is here. It's also elsewhere in some of these trees. It's helpful when you get a kid that comes in. You want to look and see what shots they have and have not had. Um, when you bring it up, uh, it's supposed to be that if they have had a shot, it shows up in blue. And if they have not had a shot that they're supposed to have already had, it shows up in red. And that sometimes works out well and sometimes doesn't. You can't always go by that. So you still need to have your uh, handy shots recommendations uh, close by. Um, I like to sort it by immunization so that it puts all the DTAPs together and all the IPVs together and so on and so forth. So anytime a nurse gives a shot, she enters it into the computer and it shows up here. Um, progress notes here, I never I never um, type in. And I never use those. Uh, billing manually, sometimes you'll have to use. If you're billing something that's not just a uh, straight up ENM 99213 or whatever, sometimes you have to go into billing manually to bill some sort of specific thing that you're doing uh, or bill the visit in a certain way when it's not just available by clicking diagnosis and then, or excuse me, by clicking document and E&M &E billing and selecting whether it's a level 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. I bill procedures this way. Um, you can bill procedures from within the ordering program. I can't teach you that because that's not the way I've been doing it. Um, but it's probably better to do it that way if you'll learn it. Um, transaction history I've never used. Let's see if there's anything else in here you actually use. Uh, demographics you'll sometimes use. It brings up uh, if you need to change their address or their phone number or if uh, uh, they're listed as being under the wrong doctor, you can change that here. Uh, anything about the patient you can update. Sometimes the names are entered wrong or if you want, if the patient goes by something besides their first name, you can click, you can put what they go by here under nickname. So it can be very helpful to go in here to adjust certain things on the patient's uh, demographic portion of their chart. Um, I like to use this no-show appointment when a patient doesn't show up for their appointment. Uh, before I mark them as missed, I click this and I save it to their chart so that there's a record in their chart of the fact that they missed an appointment just so I can keep track of uh, how many they've missed. Um, date override is a function that currently doesn't work well and I don't recommend using it, but it'll, it's a, they're working on trying to get it to work so that it, you can do your notes 
uh, after the day uh, that you actually saw the patient. Currently, at midnight the day you see the patient, you lose everything that uh, you've typed in on that patient's note, including all your orders and vitals and everything, and so you have to go back and manually enter it. Um, so hopefully they'll get that working real well. And then there's admit orders. If the patient comes in and you need to directly admit them to the hospital, you can pull this up and fill in all the information for the admission, and uh, it'll print it out nicely on a piece of paper that has a, a DCH uh, barcode that can be scanned, and it's, uh, it works a lot better than actually just handwriting notes to send with the patient. Um, you can return to main tree. I don't know why it doesn't start you on the main tree, but there are some other things out here uh, that you can go to that... Uh, most of them are repeats of the tree that I've just showed you. But if you ever find yourself here, usually you're going to click on Physician Adult Care. Uh, if you're in the different in a different clinic, you'll go into their uh, um, um, tree. Or if you're seeing a child in the uh, family medicine clinic or doing a GYN service only in the uh, family medicine clinic, it can sometimes be useful to go into Physician OBGYN or Pediatrics. Um, so that uh, you get a note, uh, a tree that is uh, sort of tailor-made for the type of patient you're seeing. But for the most part, you're usually going to be going into adult care. I don't know why, but sometimes when you open a patient's chart, it starts there, and then other times it starts from within one of these things. So, um, anyways, uh, we're going to go into the adult care tree and look at a couple more things. Um, again, you see that you've got, you've usually got the result viewer and ordering program handy for you at all times because you use them a lot. Uh, all these things in through here I've never used, um, all the way down to where it says expanded problem. And um, here is the place where you're going to, if you want to use the trees uh, to type your note, um, then you would select their specific problem or reason for visit to go in to get some sort of tailor made stuff. Uh, to help you type your, to help you efficiently do your note. Um, and the last thing I want to show you is down here at the bottom, you've got uh, print RX specialty order. If you've ordered something like a, I don't know, a, a lift chair or a crutches or something that is not a drug, then this is where you go. It brings up a page and you can type what it is that you're ordering and then the diagnosis code that goes with it and print it out and the patient can take it with them to wherever it is they're supposed to get it filled. Um, I think that's about it for this lesson. Uh, in uh, other lessons, we're going to go in and talk about specifically how to use these trees to generate a note. But in this one, we just wanted to talk about, in general, how to kind of navigate some of the more useful portions of uh, the upper levels of the trees. Um, so that's it. This is the Metinformatics tutorial lesson on checking messages. Uh, we just, we covered how to get to the message screen in the first lesson. If you need a reminder, it's just simply by clicking on this message button here on the left hand column. And we're going to go into a little bit more detail now about how to check messages, uh, what most common messages there are, ha what to do with them, how to get rid of them when you're done with them, and so on. Now I've just sent myself a fake message on a patient called Mickey Mouse here that says you have lab results. Uh, when you order labs on a patient, when the results come back, the lab will send you a message that says just that. There's no need to double click on the message to actually read it because the, all the information you need is there in the subject line when it comes to this type of message. The you have lab results and you have clinical documents res, uh, messages are the two most common messages that you'll get. And uh, either kind, you won't have to actually open the message. Really, the message itself need, is telling you that you need to open the patient's chart to look at something whether it be a lab or if it says clinical documents it might be a uh, report on an outside read on an x-ray that you've ordered <coughs> or it might be um, a message from or excuse me a letter from a consultant anything that goes into the patient's chart uh, that isn't from our lab or isn't a note that from an outside source whether it be a form or a letter from anywhere goes into the result viewer which is covered in another, me in another uh, lesson, but it will come in as a clinical document as far as your messages go. So what you'll do when you get a you have lab results or a you have clinical documents message is select the message and then you'll click this